In today's session, uh, what we will do is we will continue with the folder connector. Okay, the source connector is folder uh, in Power BI. Okay, how do we uh, leverage this feature, uh, especially when it comes to uh, an Excel file which have uh, more than one sheets in it? For example, I have 10 Excel files. Each file uh, has, you know, um, two to three sheets in it. In that case, how we are going to consolidate or combine all the, for example, I have 10 files, right? 10 Excel files, all the 10 Excel files and each file have three sheets in it, subsheets in it. How we are going to combine it, okay? And also, uh, what all the, if any future, uh, any files which comes to this folder later point in time, how it is going to handle it, okay? Will that simply load that newly, Push to file into that folder into Power BI, or um, uh, does it require any special treatment? Okay. And also, we'll take a look at um, how to deal with the errors in case of any errors, how we are going to deal with it. Okay. So, what are the, um, what are the things that you need to keep in mind uh, when before you combine all the files? Before combine all the files, from a folder using the folder connector. So you need to make sure that all the files in the folders and subfolders have the same file format and st structure, okay? Supposing you have a mix of um, Excel file, XML file, JSON file, then it will not work. Okay, in my folder, I have the mix of all the files because we cannot keep uh, multiple folders to hold different types of files. In our org, we are using different types of files. Hence, we are storing everything in a single folder. In the case, yes, we can go to the transform uh, data, Power Query Editor, wherein we can filter those files that are not of uh, the similar type. Okay, for example, you want to load all the CSV files or all the Excel file uh, only from that folder into your Power BI desktop. In that case, you can exclude those files that are not Excel file okay, using Power Query Editor. So I'll just show you how we can do it. Uh, I just uh, click on get, get data and let's hit uh, the more here, but you cannot find the folder connector here itself. In the meanwhile, I'll just go to the folder connector and we'll, we'll take a look at how we can And we'll see if it is going to be in C daily sales. Here I can see that uh, four files are there. What I do is I just for the time being, I will delete one file here. New file. Okay, here if you see here, all the Excel files are there. In the previous session, we have seen the CSV files. Now Excel file. And if I open this file, I can see that two sheets are there here. Look here, sheet one and uh, sheet two. So when I click on sheet two also, I can see the data are there here, but in total we have 18 records, excluding the uh, column header. And here also 18, 36 records are there, okay? Similarly, here also the same thing, okay? Mars.xls and APR also we have seen uh, data. So three into, uh, 3 into how much? And 18, 18, 36. 3 into 36. Three into 36, we get 108 records, should get combined together and then get loaded into a single table in Power BI. Okay, after this, uh, for the time being, right, what I'll do is I'll just select the main folder name. And then I just go here and select the folder. Look here, we have various options here in the all option. You can see on the right side, the folder. I'm going to paste it. This is my main folder. I hit OK button.
you can see all the three files, including the one uh, that was available under a subfolder. We can see it here. Okay, under EPR, this is a subfolder under the NC daily sales. Even that file also got picked up. So now I just um, hit the load button. As I discussed uh, in the previous session, we have three, four buttons are there. The cancel is, uh, is straightforward. If you don't want to load it, you can click on cancel. And transform data is your Power Query editor and your combine. So what we here you know, we do is if you choose this option, it will combine all the three files and then it will take you to the, your Power Query Editor. Or the other option is you combine and load. Don't take it to the Power Query Editor. Instead, you combine all these three files in a single file and then load it, okay? But we don't want you know, this option. First, I just want to load it and then see what is happening. Okay, three files got uh, loaded and I just go to the data view. And here under the fields, you can find the NC daily sales folder. When, no matter what type of file that you loaded, including the folder, it will consider them as a table in Power BI. Okay, look here, this is there. And if I expand this one, I can see uh, you know this, the, these columns. Usually when you load any file, you will find the columns that belong to that data file. You can see it here. Whereas when it comes to the folder, you can see the metadata here. Okay. Let's wait for some time. It will take some time to refresh here. So you can see that June, March, April, all the three files and it which is of uh, which are of a dot XLS extension. And this all metadata, when this file got access, modified, date created, and which folder these files are available, it's fine. It gives more information about that data, and we call this a metadata. So next step is our objective is we wanted to combine all these three uh, files into a single file. I'm going to hit this transform data. So this one will be taking me to my Power Query editor. So this is where we do all kind of cleaning everything. Look here, the same thing we are seeing it. Whatever the in the data we have seen, the same thing we are seeing it here. I'm going to select these two columns first, and I'm going to right click remove other columns. I don't need other columns. Okay, fine. I'm done with this. The next step is uh, content. Here you can see the combined files, the icon. Can you see it here? Uh, this icon. If you click on it, this is the one will combine all the data. Supposing you don't need, uh, we have a mix of different files here, XLS and JSON files, you just click on it and then you can apply text filters, okay? You can apply filters or simply you can, for example, I don't want you know this file to be combined, okay, April, I just need only that. Assume that this is your XML file or JSON file because you cannot combine the mix of um, different file uh, types, okay? If you want to combine Excel files, you can combine more than multiple, uh, more than one Excel files in one go, but you cannot combine XLS with other types of files like JSON, XML, okay, or CSV file. Okay, so this is how you can exclude it by unselecting the file which you don't need it. You can, you know, if this is a JSON file, you know very well uh, the, you know, the limitation. You cannot mix an XML or JSON file with the XLS file, simply unselect it, okay. Since I, all these three files are XLS file, I'm going to select all these things. I'm going to click on OK. So that is one of the advantages of uh, going to the Power Query Editor, OK? So if you don't um, use the Power Query Editor and if you simply use the Combine and Load option, what will happen is if you have a mix of files, it will throw an error immediately, OK? It will take some time and throw an error, OK? We don't want that to happen. So hence, first we load the data and then we filter which files uh, we don't need it, we'll unselect them, okay? 
So all right, now I just go ahead and click on this combined data option now. It opened up the preview window. If you select this one, you can see what values are in sheet one and sheet two also what values are there. You can see it here. And here what I do is I'm going to the sheet one and sheet two. Two sheets are available in each file, June, April, March, June. So, but here it is not showing each and every file. What I do is I just select parameter, you know, here, this option, right click on it and transform data. If you do so, it now it will show all the files in April and March. This sheet one sheet two belongs to June month. Okay. So in this file, we have two sheets, Mar and sheet one. Another file, the first sheet, the second sheet name is sheet two, and this is sheet one. And sheet one, sheet two is related to your um, June month. Look here. So we have three files. Each file, we have two sheets. It shows this one. But don't get confused, sheet one and sheet two. What is this? This is your uh, file. Okay. And if you click, if you click on it next to that table here, you can see the column names data here itself. With this also, you can cross check whether are you loading the correct one or not, whether Power BI, Power Query Editor loaded all the required sheets only or not. Okay. But don't click on the table. Next to that, you need to click on it. Here, somewhere here, okay? Okay, everything seems to be good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the icon once again. So this icon, double arrow, okay? Uh, the In the data, I'm seeing that. I'm going to select this one. This time, it shows all the 26 columns that are available in each sheet. In each sheet, obviously, I have 26 columns in it. And then you have an option which got enabled by default. Use original columns as prefix. In this case, what will happen is if you hit this OK button, the co original column name will get prefixed. For example, you have ordered it, ordered it column dot column one, row dot ID column two. We don't want that to happen. I'm going to unselect it and I'm going to hit OK. And let's see what happens. Now, all the three files got combined together, right? So combine and each file have uh, two subsheets in it. And you can see that here, this is what you can cross reference it. For example, if you click on it, you can see that sheet one, sheet two, March, April, uh, March, April, two sheets and sheet one, sheet two related to your June, okay? But don't uh, fear that June month did not so actually, you know, while selecting this, I, I should have selected or the file name should have been given, the sheet name should have been given June 1, June 2, something like that, okay? I'm going to hit OK. I don't need this column now. I just remove it. So now we now we can see that uh, the column headers showing something strange value, column 1, column 2. We need to promote the first row to this column header so that we will have the correct column name for each column. Okay, we will have the meaningful name for the columns. I just go to the transform ribbon, use first row as it is, select use first row as it is. So it got promoted, right? So the first row got promoted as a column header. Now we have the proper 
all our names here. And then what I do is I just go and do one simple transformation. Look here, the quantity, it assigned the text data type. I just select it and then I will make it uh, quantity. I'll make the whole number. And then the discount is also, I'm going to make it as a whole whole number, so decimal number. Discount is supposed to be decimal number. I'm going to replace current. And profit is also a decimal number. Next sales. Sales. Okay, what I will do is I'll just, um, right click on it i know very well in this we have some text values or the replace value some this one we already discussed right so along with the number dollar value is there hence it assigned the entire column values uh, you know has um, text data type so i'm going to remove the dollar how i remove it find out the dollar and wherever dollar is there replace the empty string and then the next one is I have some missing values. I know very well. Okay, I just select uh, the replace values the NA by zero here. Okay, so far so good. Uh, I have done um, data transformation or data formatting. The next step is we want to make sure that how many number of records got loaded, all the three Excel files put together. We will hit the count rows and check. 113 records got loaded. Okay, 113. 108 should be there, but 113 records. That means uh, how much uh, more? Three plus two, five records got loaded, uh, got loaded in addition to the data files. Why? Why it shows uh, five records in excess here. Total number of records, all the three files put together, only 108 records should have been loaded. So including the header 109, right? So one header is enough, 109. So four records got, uh, you know, loaded in excess than the original value because each and every sheet we have the column header. This here, this is I'm talking about the first row. And if you go here also, we have the row ID. So three files. Um, let's you know, forget about this one. One uh, at least you know one uh, column header should be there. Remaining two files we have two into two four plus one five. So yeah, obviously five. Okay, correct. Five plus eight one or eight plus uh, five is one one three. Yes, it's correctly loaded. You understood what I'm trying to say? So next one is, yes, I have checked how many number of records got loaded. Yes, all the sheets, uh, the subsheets also got consolidated or combined. So now what I do is I just click on cross because I don't want to see again. Okay, I don't want to keep it as part of my steps. I just removed it. That, just, that is just for our verification purpose. We have used it. Okay, we are done with everything. I just select uh, close and apply. But still, the sales column, I did not change it to the decimal. That is the mistake I did it. I just go ahead, no problem, and then we will change it to the decimal error. Right? Look here, we have one error. I'm going to click on the view errors and see what is the problem. Error will come. Let it come, no problem. We have noticed one error, but when I clicked on apply changes, now that error got disappeared. Okay, that means that doesn't mean uh, the error got fixed on its own. Look here, there is a separate folder called query errors. It captured the errors here. Okay, and if you see here, I, I told you, right? So for row dot ID, the column values, especially if you see here in the quantity column, the quantity column, we can see error for this one because here uh, the column headers are displaying here. You remember each and every file, 
we have the column header, right? So this one country and uh, this column header got repeated here. And then it put the second, sorry, the, you know, this this one uh, got repeated here. This one, the entire thing. See, if I copy paste it, what will happen? This is what has happened. So here, when you, if you want to do some kind of, uh, see, actually what happened now, if you see here, the quantity column, okay, the quantity from that one, um, the actual column name, quantity went in here. Since it's a CSC file, it is not getting copied correctly. Yeah, the quantity is going here. So quantity is a text, okay? The text column went into a decimal number column. That is the reason why it is throwing in error. Got it? So now what I do is I just simply ignore this one. I'll just go to the NC daily sales and I will just take a look at the sales column again. Yeah, this one. This I forgot to do it. Um, ideally, after removing the dollar, we should have changed it to the decimal number header. Good. Now it got converted to decimal number header. Fine. So, but how are we going to deal with this error? How are we going to deal with this? And for example, if I simply ignore the error, but thing is, one you know, it'll it'll display that uh, how many number of records you have a error while loading the data. But when you click on view errors or apply changes, you will not see any uh, warning. Okay, it is not going to be a showstopper. That is what I'm going to say. It is just kind of a warning. But however, look here, if I say view errors, unable to get errors for your queries. Okay, this time I'm getting, okay. So this time it will open, okay. So fine. So now what I do is I just select the table visual apply changes. I'm going to give apply changes. All the correct data, the error data got excluded. The correct data got loaded into a model. This is your model. Okay. So now what I am going to do is I'm going to select a table visual which is available under the visualizations pane. I, mean, I just hit on, click on this one. It got dropped here automatically, okay? We don't have to manually drag and drop. If you click on it, it will get dragged here automatically. And here what I do is I just select the category. Along with this, I just put these sales also and uh, quantity. I'll put quantity also here. Okay, all the three columns got placed here. Now what I am going to do is I'm going to push. See, in the real world scenario, what will happen is every month beginning, the previous month data will get pushed automatically here. So let us simulate that one here. But that one is automatic, but for demonstration purpose, I'm going to copy it manually and then put it there. Copy the me dot um, file me, uh, April, May, June, right? Okay. I just go here, I forgot the file name, NC daily sales. I just go here. Yeah, May is not there. I just copy pasted it. So April, May, March, April, May, June. Okay, May I have included just now. And if I go to the Power BI desktop and if I hit the refresh, it should take into account of the data that are available in the newly pushed file, the May.xls to this visual. This one will get updated. So now what happens, the newly pushed file will also get loaded into your Power BI desktop, but while loading it, still you are getting the error. One, one says eight errors are there now. Apply changes. But it shows 79,000, okay, even after uh, loading the new data, it should change, right? 576, you remember this? I just go to the transform data and I'll go and check whether the new file data got 
loaded. It was not because of the error. Still, it is loading it. Let's wait for some more time. And we can see the errors in NC Daily Sales. And again, two places we can see the error. Two folders got created, and three folders are there in total. Pick still uh, to combine all the things. Still loading it. Let us wait for two more seconds. My God, it's this much of time. Now all the Excel files, the structure is also the same, including the sheet names. 
I just uh, go to the workspace and then I just um, click on new and um, data set. Sorry, here I just go and then I just select dev order and then here data flow. Click on data flow. Add new tables or files. Here uh, in the file tab, you can, sorry, not JSON. I just, this is the problem with it. new and then the data flow and uh, data flow is not closed for last time i would you like to try to recover from the no and here add new tables and the file and here you have the folder and here you have the daily sales i need the next I'm going to say combine now. I just use uh, the, see, I, I should have tried the first file, but I have tried with the Mars.xls. And so now I just say transform data. Only four files are coming. Yeah, four files that are required. Yeah, all the four files are available now. Okay, somewhere, look here, the structure problem here. And here, need out XLS. In one file, the return column was not the return is there here. And which file it was, it is giving that uh, file name was not given. The return is there here. And somewhere, some file I missed up. And return, yeah, here also it is fine. And June month return is there, and uh, here also the return is there. Very good. Uh, yeah, and the first file is a copy okay, APR. Look here in this one, I don't have the return column. So, with this, we can conclude that all the files should have the similar structure. The column name should also be in case of any columns are missing. Supposing you have 26 columns, all the 26 columns should be there. I just copy this last trial, okay? And I just paste it here. I just rename it as a APR. APR. See, in the previous case, uh, even though there was a column, uh, the structure was not matching, it was working. Where? in uh, Power BI Desktop. Data flow, click on data flow. Now, you know, and here add new tables and go to the full file and uh, select the folder name. And here you just specify the folder name.
and uh, hit next. And then what I do is I just say combine. Let's see what happens. Here I literally go by the first file, okay, and uh, here I just say transform data. In the interest of time, I just go and give it a try with this. In the real time scenario, the volume of the data will be very, very high. Look here, in this uh, case, right, uh, it takes June. Okay. Detecting data types for combined table columns. It checks the data types. And then number of columns should be same. The sheet name should be same. The file type should be same. And even after that, let's see what happens. If I go here, source name is not showing anything here. If you click on it here, okay, it has taken into account of all the four files. Very good, okay. And uh, what I will, yeah, it has taken into account all the files. All the four files data are there here. Okay, uh, and uh, I just go here and do the count rows. One warning, 72 rows are there, completed. Again, now we made some progress, but somewhere some issue happened, right? So I just close this count rows. And now uh, if you see here, uh, three files, right? So March, if you select here, April, March, uh, April, May, June, all the four files are there. And each file I have uh, 18 records in it. Sorry, 36, 36 into four, how much? Mm. So 36 into 4. 144. No, no, no. Uh, 18, 18. Okay, okay. 4 into 18. The same thing. 72 are correct only, right? Yeah. 4 files, 18 records each file. Okay. So, uh, right. so 4 into 18, 72 records are there. No. So what happens in the first page, we have 18 records are there. Second sheet, it is not taking into account because I have selected sheet one only now. So when it, now what we need to do is we just go here, transform file. We need to make some changes here. So this one I'll check and tell you, okay, in cloud service, right? You remember in the initially, I just selected the transform, but I selected the sheet one. So what he did, it included sheet one from all the files okay but sheet two it is it was not doing it how we can select because at a time we can select only one thing here right so we cannot select more than one but here if you expand this one just let's take a quick look at the sample file look here here the sample file june.xls okay parameter transform file and here look here sheet one source name equal to sheet one i believe sheet two should also be there here it is not there so we can by customizing this one here it requires some kind of customization to this one okay and uh, comma sheet two
the wish not okay let me do one thing if i yeah it is throwing an error i just use parenthesis here okay <laughs> i'm going to use uh, the python syntax here let me see if you want to specify more than one file no okay are you sure you want to continue click on okay no it is not doing it is showing some error commit uh, anyway so error uh, use updated and cancel are you sure Sheet one, sheet two should also come here. Okay. So what I will do this time, I'm going to say sheet two. Already we have included a sheet one. Let us see what is happening now. March.exil zone, all the files look at it takes into account of all the files, but the sheet two should come here. The other way is filtered hidden rows. So I invoke custom function. It should not overwrite the previous one. If it overwrites, we are not lucky. I think it will overwrite the previous one. So, you know, there should be an option there. Sheet 1, comma, sheet 2. If you put this, this issue will be solved. That is what I think. Anyhow, I will check it out. If this is not giving the correct total, we will check that one. So real time scenario, you'll be experiencing this kind of uh, scenarios. Okay, in the multiple sheets. In simple thing, what you can do is you can publish this report here in the Power BI test. The alternative is right to overcome all the things. You can you have consolidated all the files and then you can publish it to cloud. That's all. But uh, if somebody wants you to do it in cloud. Then you should be knowing this one. This one also I'll check and tell you. you know, from your side, you don't worry. Okay, you don't have to sign up now because um, uh, it will be too early to do it. Okay. 38 rows from sheet 2. Okay. And now it is picking up only from sheet 2. Row 72. And uh, 72 only is coming, 60, 72. No, I, as I judge, uh, it will take only from the sheet two. It, it has overwritten the previous one. Ideally, what we should have done, we should have copy pasted this one. Okay, duplicate. Here, this is for sheet two, this is for sheet one, and then append it. That is another option. Got it? You need to append it. See here. Um, sheet 2. Okay. And okay. Now itself I will do it. Uh, if you are okay with uh, the time. Okay. We'll just find a few same minute and then we'll see. It is a little bit. Um, so what is the, uh, the warning we are getting it? Okay, we can ignore the warnings also. Let's see what is. I just do. Yeah, source dot name of the table was not found. It shows some other problem now. We can't even duplicate this one. That is the problem now. 
If I see okay. here, earlier it was showing the data. Okay, for one second. We filled up the source name. Source dot name of the table was not found. Since I have expanded it from the middle, it got confused. Okay, okay, okay. So what I will do is I will just go here and we can throw another. Right. So let me do one thing. I just Yeah, I just remove this because I did the expand in between, right? I, I just did this in between. Don't worry, I'll explain you once again. Don't worry, okay? Let me see if I can. Yeah, anywhere we also will get this issue. And this is where I expanded it. Oh, I, I think it goes here from here. Yeah, now it, uh, the change data type. Up to this, you have 72 records. Fine. So now I just right click on it and duplicate it. That one was from sheet two. Now we'll be using it for the sheet one. This is a duplicate of that one. What I will do is I will just uh, go here and uh, select these steps. And uh, here I just select the sample file two. <clears throat> Filter. Okay. sample file. This is where we mentioned about sheet one or sheet two, right? Uh, not this one. Yeah, here I just say sheet one. This is 7340 and uh, here also 7340. Let's see. Yeah, the same thing. But these records are duplicate of that one. We don't need all these records, right? So remove rows. Remove uh, top rows. 72 records. I don't need it because it's a duplicate of that one. I just copy pasted this one, but for this, we need to use uh, that thing. Okay, the, you know, these steps. For example, if I go here, invoke custom function, okay, rename, invoke, um, yeah, all the files. And uh, the next one is rename here, the expanded table. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Here, I just select these two columns and right click on it, remove other columns. Now, when I expand this one, it will create new one here. Correct, correct. Now we got it.
this is a little bit roundabout way of doing it, right? It takes a lot of time, a lot of steps. At least the Power BI desktop, it is pretty straightforward. Here, I select uh, sheet one, right? Did I select sheet one or sheet two there? 7340, yeah, this is sheet one. Yeah, sheet one should go here. Here, uh, 734, it shows uh, 1401. And, uh, okay, okay, 734. So what I do is I just select uh, first file. Okay, what I will do is, right, I will just, because it is a copy of that one. This is sheet two. And uh, she too, it shows the same value. So this one I'll explore and come back, okay? Give me some time and I will check and come back because I don't want to waste time doing trial and error during this session. But troubleshooting is very much important. You can also learn it. Ideally, we will select the, uh, uh, you know, the sheet one and uh, we will load it in one file and then we duplicate that records. But when you duplicate that one, what is happening? Ideally, we should create new query. This one, I will, we will redo it. Tomorrow, okay. Tomorrow also will continue. Okay, any of this is uh, waste. What I will do is, right, I'm going to wrap up the session. Before that, you have any questions? Okay, since you don't have any questions, I'm going to wrap up the session. Tomorrow also will continue. In tomorrow's session, we will see uh, how we can deal with this one, the cloud, right? How we can do the combining the files with the folder. The To summarize uh, the advantage of uh, the folder connector option is you, you can, you don't have to manually load each and every file. Even if you have files that are available in subfolders, right? It, it The folder connector, what it does is it not only picks up the files from your main folder, but also from the subfolders, it picks up the picks up all the files, okay? And you don't have to manually load it one after other, okay? And uh, the, yeah, so that, that is one of the important advantages. And also whenever you push any new file and if you schedule the data refresh, it whatever the transformation that you applied at the time of combining the files for first time, right? Uh, using the folder connector, as part of the folder connector, the same transformation will apply to the new file also. Okay, with that, I'm going to wrap up the session.